Hi, this is Arnav. Welcome to the channel. Today we have another blockchain video on the cards. We are going to discuss about the various types of blockchains, public, consortium, and private blockchains. So let's get down to it. So first, public blockchain. So basically, in a public blockchain, anyone can become, can read and write to the blockchain. They can send transactions, and they can read other people's transactions. So that's a public blockchain. And in a public blockchain, anyone can take part in the consensus process. For verifying transactions, so anyone can become a node. They can uh, actually just start, which is called mining. So that's the thing which is present in public blockchain. And the examples include include Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like uh, Light, uh, like Monero, and uh, Ethereum, which is not a cryptocurrency but uh, it is just a platform to build other blockchain apps. These are the implementation of public blockchain. Okay. So what's a consortium and private blockchain? So in consortium blockchain, what we have is that the the read the read and write might be restricted there will be certain restrictions and the transactions will be verified by only certain nodes so, so like it's used consortium blockchain is used in the in the banking sector so say we have 15 banks who have decided that they'll use the blockchain technology so out of the 15 say 8 or 9 have to sign a block to be uh, to for it to be verified finally for it to be put on the blockchain and only these 15 banks have the power to be, take part in the consensus process. Not you, not me can become a node. And the read and write might also be actually restricted. So that's a consortium blockchain. So what's a private blockchain? A private blockchain is basically just a centralized database which has the advantage, advantages of a blockchain like which is cryptographic audibility. And but it's basically not really a blockchain and in, in, in that case the transactions and the consensus is done the consensus process is done by a single party so that's a private blockchain okay and so what are the examples of each of them like I told you public blockchain is used uh, if the examples include Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in the case of uh, the consortium blockchain the examples include like uh, the solution by R3, B, B3WI and Hyperledger which is basically IBM and Linux backed project and in the case of private blockchain I can't remember an example you can like uh, but it's just basically a centralized system with cryptographic uh, security okay so which system should one use depending on the specific use cases and the advantage and advantages and the disadvantages of each of them so in the case of a public in the case of a say so what i'm going to do is i'm going to club them so we have public and on the other hand we have consortium and private so in the case of a consortium or private what the advantages include scalability so like not every every node has to verify the transactions uh, and take part in the consensus process uh, and so like there are so there are certain limited nodes that take part in the consensus process and it, it is actually really nice then the second wide one might be privacy so basically we can restrict who sees what which is not the case in the public blockchain so that's the that's the second advantage the third advantage might be that the private block the consortium blockchains they are they might be cheaper so the whole transaction process involves uh, very less nodes so the whole they might be cheaper okay so what what are the advantages of public blockchain so public blockchain the advantages include that in a public blockchain the whole code is open source any what you see is what you get so basically a developer when he develops a solution say a smart contract on the ethereum blockchain he can't change that ever so that's one advantage you get what you see and that can be also disadvantage in the case of a public in a private or consortium blockchain what what happens is that the we can make changes after the code has been pushed but in the case of public blockchain the changes can can never be pushed okay so what are the other, other advantages of public blockchain the second advantage might be that since public blockchain the in in the case of public blockchain the whole community takes part in the development and all the things associated with it there are a lot of new innovative ideas that come through and so there's this thing called network effects and so a lot of new ideas a lot of new solutions get tried and tested so the whole solution might be actually better given time if we compare to private or consortium blockchain in which the solution is implemented by certain companies uh, certain employees of the companies so that's that um, yeah hope you like the video uh, and subscribe to the channel for further blockchain videos bye bye